The story you are about to hear is a compilation of documented true facts featuring historical characters, events, or places that has played a role in shaping history. Please sit back and listen as I recite this narrative for you. James Fairweather was only 15 years old when he killed James Atfield and Nahid Amane in 2014. James Atfield, who had a brain injury after a previous car accident in 2010, was stabbed by Fairweather 102 times as he lay drunk and helpless in a Colchester park. He was also a father of five. Many of the knife wounds were inflicted purely to cause the young father pain. He was also stabbed through his eyes. On June 17, James Fairweather killed Almane while she walked along a nature trail in the Greenstead area of the town. He also stabbed her through her eyes. She was a student and was 31 years old. Police knew both murders had been carried out by the same person and Colchester was gripped by terror. Fewer people felt comfortable going out in public and the authorities cleared as much undergrowth as possible. Teenager James Fairweather was apprehended while planning a third murder in May 2015, and in January 2016, he pleaded responsible for both deaths. In April 2016, he was found guilty of both murders and sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 27 years. As he was sent down, he mouthed toward his parents, I don't give a shit. An unhappy schoolboy, Fairweather was bullied by his classmates because of his prominent ears. He had a history of violence while a pupil at Colchester Academy. Shillingly, when asked what career he would choose, those who knew him at school claimed he said, murderer. He also threatened to carry out a Columbine-style gun massacre in his school. These were discounted as idle threats by his peers. Fairweather's first brush with the law first came the year before the gruesome killings when he was convicted of causing criminal damage to a house. By 2014, he had been sentenced to a year's supervision after he carried out a knife point robbery for some cigars. Despite his tendency for violence, none of these signs pointed towards the terrible crimes to come. Fairweather, who is being detained in a secure psychiatric hospital, was obsessed with the Yorkshire Ripper. Peter Sutcliffe and regarded the U.S. serial killer, Ted Bundy, as his favorite murderer. He had denied murder but admitted manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility, claiming he was possessed by the devil and heard voices that compelled him to kill. The police hunt to finally capture Fairweather cost police 2.6 million pounds and the warp killer kept newspaper clippings as trophies following each murder. Jurors took eight and a half hours to unanimously find him guilty of both murders. Their verdict came after one expert said Fairweather's description of the hallucinations were like something plucked from a horror film. Sentencing him, Mr. Justice Spencer, sitting at the Old Bailey, told Fairweather he had acted out violent sadistic fantasies fueled by your obsession with serial killers. He said Fairweather had been immersed in that obsession for several months at least, and was seeking to emulate others such as Peter Sutcliffe, the Yorkshire Ripper. Fairweather carried out his first attack just three days after he had been handed a referral order for a knife point robbery on a shopkeeper. In the second attack, he had deliberately knocked off Almanay's sunglasses to target her eyes as Sutcliffe had done with one of his victims. The judge said, I have no doubt the way James Atfield screamed in pain when he was stabbed through the eye had remained with you and excited you. As well as autism, psychologists believed he had emerging psychopathic personality disorder and he was responding well to the treatment. The judge said, it is too early to say how your emerging psychopathic personality disorder will develop. Had he been an adult, Fairweather could have faced a whole life sentence for two murders 
carried out with a substantial degree of premeditation with sadistic features. The starting point would have been a minimum of 30 years. The judge took into account that the murders were planned, the victims were vulnerable, and that physical or mental suffering was inflicted before death. Almanea, a student from Saudi Arabia, who was walking to the University of Essex campus at the time of the attack, was a lone woman and physically slight. Spencer said the fact that Fairweather's autism was undiagnosed was not a defense. Many people of all ages suffer from autism. It would be an unfair and unjustified slur on them to suggest that autism predisposes someone to commit acts of violence. The court had also heard that Fairweather had two previous convictions, one for robbery when he stole 30 pounds, cigars and a lighter from a shop, and another for criminal damage when he broke a window. He received a youth referral order for both. He sentenced him for each of the two offenses of murder to be detained at Her Majesty's pleasure. That is the same as a sentence of life imprisonment. He would serve a minimum term of 27 years, less the 339 days he has already spent on remand. Thereafter, it will be for the parole board to decide when, if ever, you should be released. If you are ever released, you will remain on license for the rest of your life. Okay. Some voices were talking to me. You need to make a sacrifice, or we're going to come and get you. You need to do it. And I saw him. It was where it was on the land on the grass. Like, like that. It was like just fast asleep, where he was drunk. And he goes, he goes, he's the one. He's the one. He's the one. Do it, do it. So I went up to him. Can I stand up? Like, yes. Went up to him. I stood over like that. So I stabbed him first there. I've done it a few times. While I was doing that, my voices were laughing and laughing and laughing louder and louder. Harvey Miguel Robinson is both a teen killer and a serial killer. Harvey would murder his first victim when he was just 17 years old when he would sexually assault and murder a nurse's aide. Robinson would be arrested and sent to prison for eight months for an unrelated charge. When released from custody, Harvey would go on to rape and murder two more women before he would be arrested. Due to the first murder taking place when he was 17, he could not be sentenced to death. However, since the two took place after he was 18, he would receive the death sentence. Harvey has been on death row in Pennsylvania since his trial in the 1990s. Along with three murders, Robinson was charged and convicted of the sexual assault of a child and another woman. Linked to the three killings by DNA evidence, Robinson was convicted in November 1994 and sentenced to death in all three cases. Just 19 at that time, he was thought to be one of the youngest serial killers in the U.S. history. Robinson grew up in a troubled family. His father, Harvey, was an alcoholic arrested for manslaughter after beating his mistress to death. While in his school, Robinson was known for being an athletic student and won awards for his essays, but was also arrested several times for burglary and resisting arrest. A drug addict, he showed signs of sociopathy at a young age, as he had an ability to distinguish the difference between right and wrong, detested any form of authority, and enjoyed being feared by others. On the night of August 5, 1995, Robinson broke into the home of 29-year-old Joanne Burkharth with the intention of burglarizing it. But he stole only $50 from her dresser. Four days later, her dead body was found lying on the living room floor after one of her neighbors called the police to complain about Burkhardt stereo being on for three days. An autopsy revealed that Burkhardt had been raped and bludgeoned to death. Robinson was only 17 years old at the time of the murder. For Burkhardt's rape and murder, the jury sentenced teen killer Robinson to death, but that sentence was overturned on appeal and he was resentenced in 2001 to life in prison with no chance on parole. In June 1993, Robinson abducted, raped, and stabbed 15-year-old newspaper carrier Charlotte Smoyer. One of Charlotte's regular newspaper customers noticed Charlotte's car outside her front window, but when she saw no signs of the girl, she called the offices of the morning call. Charlotte's supervisors could not locate her, and they contacted the police. That same afternoon, Charlotte's body was found in a heavily wooded area nearby. 
Charlotte had been raped and stabbed over 20 times. Days later, Robinson broke into the home of John and Denise Sam Kelly and burglarized it, stealing John's gun collection and drinking their whiskey. Three days later, Robinson broke into the home of another woman with the intention of raping and killing her. However, when he saw the woman sleeping with her boyfriend, he decided to kill her daughter instead. Robinson raped and strangled the child, but she managed to survive. It is believed that Robinson had stalked the mother for several days beforehand, as he did with the other victims. Eight days later, Robinson returned to the Sam Kelly house in the middle of the night with the intention of killing Denise while John was away. He entered the house via an open window. Denise woke up to the sounds of Robinson's footsteps, saw him, and attempted to escape. As she was running through the front yard, Robinson grabbed and pinned her onto the ground. When she bit his arm, Robinson repeatedly punched her, cut her lip open, raped her, and tried to strangle her to death. Her screams alerted a neighbor, which prompted him to flee from the house. When police arrived, they found a butcher knife wrapped in a napkin lying outside the bathroom door. A month later, Robinson raped and murdered a woman named Jessica Jean Fortney. She was beaten and stabbed to death, and her body was found lying on the living room with blood splattered all over the walls. Four days later, Robinson returned to the Sam Kali home to finish the job with Denise. He attempted to break into her house to kill her but failed as the back door was equipped with an alarm system. Realizing he would not stop until Denise was finally dead, the police department sent a young police officer named Brian Lewis to stay at the Sam Kelly house in case the killer appeared again. One night, Robinson, now armed with a gun, returned to the house. Lewis heard his attempts at opening the locked doors and then watched as he broke inside through a window, which was left open on purpose. Lewis then identified himself as a police officer and told him to stop. Instead, Robinson began shooting at Lewis and he fired back, wounding Robinson. He escaped and a blood trail was found. Hours later, as police were searching the local hospitals, they were called to one after Robinson showed up to be treated for cuts and a gunshot wound. While trying to escape again, an officer appeared and pointed a gun at him and Robinson surrendered. With his DNA, eyewitness accounts, and a physical evidence against him, Robinson was sentenced to a combined 97 years in prison and three death sentences. His lawyers were able to get two of the three death sentences removed, but one still remains. While in prison, Robinson converted to Islam and is currently waiting on death row. He is also suspected of the attempted murder of Leslie Gerhardt committed five years prior to Burkhardt's murder. During the incident, an intruder removed the screen from the bedroom window and entered the house while she was staying over with a friend. The intruder began beating Gerhardt with a brick but ran away when her friend started to scream. Both Robinson and Gerhardt attended elementary school together, and he is suspected of stalking her via telephone and in person in the weeks prior to the attack. Robinson stalked women and murdered them during home invasions when they were alone. He entered their homes through open windows and wore gloves as a forensic countermeasure. When inside, Robinson would rape, beat, and kill them mostly by stabbing or strangulation. Whenever his victims survived the attack, he would stalk them for days in order to know when it was the best time to strike again. Hey everyone, I just wanted to express how grateful I am that you took the time to listen to my narration. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I am Twisted Mind and please enjoy the rest of your day. Salam.